let's take a look at a TDR, a time domain reflectometer. I've got a piece of coax here. This is, happens to be RG8X, it's 50 ohm coax, and I want to be able to determine the length of the coax and whether there's a, uh, a short or open somewhere along the, uh, the, the coax here. So in order to do that, we're going to use this TDR. And all that does is that uh, we know the speed of light in free space is 11.8 uh, nanoseconds per nanoseconds per inch. And the, uh, the spec sheet for the RG8X coax says it has a velocity factor of uh, 79%. So this wave travels in the coax 79% of the, uh, the speed of light. Okay, so if we take the 79% times our uh, 11.8, it comes out to 9.2 uh, uh, nanoseconds per inch. So what we're going to do, we'll send a signal down at the um, cable. We'll monitor the, uh, we'll look at the signal coming back, the reflected signal coming back, and we'll get the, the, uh, the time difference between it, and then we can calculate the, the length of the wire. So in order to do that, I put together a little uh, TDR here. Now, this one's made out of a Schmidt trigger, and all this here is a little oscillator. Now, I had a 100 nanofarad. I'm going to change that to 10 to, to get the frequency up a little bit higher. Uh, this inverts the signal here, and then on this side, it'll invert it back. And the only reason I have these uh, five on here, and these are 220 ohm resistors, that makes about, about uh, 44 ohms. I just want to have a fairly good match to the, uh, the 50 ohm cable. So. Uh, in fact, I ordered some uh, 250 ohm resistors, and I'm going to put those in there instead, and then I'll have uh, 50 ohms here going into the 50 ohm cable. Now, we send a signal down the cable, and if it encounters an impedance that is, uh, you know, say zero, a short circuit, or infinite, an open circuit, uh, no energy is going to be transferred into the new, new medium, and all the energy uh, is going to be reflected back. Okay, so when it gets reflected back, here we here it is. Here we're we're sending the signal down here. Now the reflected wave comes back, and that voltage adds to this voltage, so it comes up here, and that's our reflected wave going back there. Okay, so now we just take the on the scope, we uh, we can tell the time difference between these two. And it, in this case, it happens to be 194 uh, nanoseconds. And if we take uh, the 194 times our uh, 9.2 uh, nanoseconds per inch, you know, that comes out to 1784. And that's the round trip going both ways. So we divide that by two and we get uh, 892 inches. And then if we uh, Divide that by 12 to get feet, so it comes out to 74 feet, 74.36 feet. So that happens to be a 75 uh, foot uh, cable. Now, you know, this is from the spec sheet, the, uh, the uh, uh, velocity factor. Now, what you can do is just, if you know the exact uh, distance, the length of the cable, you can determine your own uh, velocity factor in there. So, uh, could be a little bit more accurate but this this is pretty good now i use this this little uh, unit here it works good but if you don't have you want to build this up you can just put it you can use a function generator so you, this this b and c this t connector here one side goes to scope one side will go to your function generator and you put in uh, six uh, kilohertz square wave and the other side goes to your coax okay so and that, that works that works fine so here it is on the scope from the uh, this is this is done with the um, signal generator and uh, it does give us a nice sharp uh, pulse here so and over here and it's at uh, about six kilohertz okay so and then we put our cursors on here and it came up to 194 nanoseconds between the two there. Now I did it with a uh, with the the unit I made up here, the Schmidt trigger one. And my frequency is only at uh, 1.3 kilohertz, so I'm going to increase that. But the uh, the pulse is pretty pretty straight. And on this one here I got uh, 192 nanoseconds. But uh, 
you know, hard to tell where you where you put that at, you know. And then I did another one with a. Um, I just used a uh, made a TDR with a uh, a NAND gate and a one shot, so it just puts out one pulse. And then I used all five, uh, six of these, and with 300 ohms, I could get 50 ohms out on that. And uh, it it worked, but didn't work all the time. But here's here's what that one looks like. So it's uh, you know hard to tell where to put the uh, the cursors there, and I ended up with 182 uh, uh, nanoseconds on that one. And all on the same coax, but uh, and then uh, the scope I set for uh, 100 nanosecond on these divisions here. So the um, that's all there is to the, the TDR. We just send in a signal down the uh, down the line, and we we monitor the reflection coming back, and we can tell the length of the cable. And if there happened to be a short or an open in the middle of the cable, it would tell us the distance where it was at. You know so. Uh, that's it. That's the uh, TDR, and this is just a simple little circuit to hook up. You'll see these these all over the internet. They're nothing uh, nothing special there, but I'm going to change this to a 10 nano nanofarad, and I'm going to change these to uh, uh, 250 ohm resistors, and uh, uh, things should work. Oh, you know, one other thing is that the uh, when you put five volts on this, the Smith triggers are good up to five volts, but then I get a lot of distortion on it. So. I kept, I ran it at about 4 volts, and uh, that seemed to, to be the best, so keep it under under, under 5 volts there, so uh, yeah, anyway, that's, uh, that's uh, TDR, and it worked out good, thank you.